What is going on, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, my name is Prodigy, and welcome to the final, final video in the Kingdom Hearts 2 Ultimania series. After this, we'll be covering the day's Ultimania. Thank you guys for all of your support on this section of the Ultimania interviews. We got through Kingdom Hearts 1, Chain of Memories, and now we're about to be done with Kingdom Hearts 2. We're going to be getting to the road to Kingdom Hearts 3, a Kingdom Hearts uh, era after this. So let's see what Nomura's thought process was after Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix and leading up to what would eventually be a, a huge part, a huge chunk of my life personally in the wait for Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm going to be covering the entirety of the scenario mysteries for the Final Mix Ultimania in one video because like I said last video, uh, these interviews are pretty short for the Final Mix Ultimania. From what I'm looking at though, uh, the questions are a little bit lengthier and there's a couple more questions than there are for the main no more interview. So this video might be slightly longer depending on how much I ran so let's get right into this. In Kingdom Hearts 1, the king searches for a Keyblade in the Realm of Darkness, but when he meets Ansem, the wise, is the Realm of Light Keyblade he has the one that Sora is currently using? No, the king has the ability to use Keyblades from both the Realm of Darkness and of Light. This is an important point. There isn't just one Keyblade from each world, just as many as there are people with qualified hearts. During the meetings, the members of Organization 13 are sitting in chairs. Is the height of these chairs determined by things like their skills and abilities? No, the height of the chairs is not fixated, they move. That is to say, the height is up to each person. The leader of Xemnas is always the highest, and to be at the same height as him would have a pretty bad feeling. So the other members wouldn't do that. Laughs. In the end of Sora and Riku's stories in Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, Roxas looks back while Hainer and the rest are walking and eating ice cream, and without seeming to care, Hainer and the others continue walking. Is this because they can't see Roxas? Well, that, it's just because they don't know Roxas, that they don't notice him, not because they can't see him. At that time, right after Xemnas explains Roxas' name, Axel says to leave things to him. Then Roxas seems jealous of how Hainer and the others are enjoying themselves while eating ice cream, and Axel interprets this as him wanting some ice cream, so he is obliged to go buy him some. Okay, those are some pretty uh, funny uh, questions, some pretty interesting questions. I'm glad he kind of clarifies that, I mean we all know this nowadays, but regarding the first question, it was kind of assumed that back then the Keeble was supposed to be this really like exclusive thing, but really it was just us being introduced to it for the first time, that's why it felt so exclusive to people like Sora, Mickey, later Riku, and Kairi did get one as well in Kingdom Hearts 2. But you get the point. Sora was the chosen one in Kingdom Hearts 1. Not the chosen one because he had the Keyblade, but he was the chosen one because of his heart. The Keyblade was just something we associated with because that was really our first time like kind of seeing someone with a Keyblade until later in the game when Riku got one. It seems like Nomura always had plans to give multiple characters Keyblades right from the beginning. I mean, technically in Kingdom Hearts 1, you had three Keyblades in that game. Kingdom Hearts 2, like two more, and then the rest of the series, like, I, I lost count. I think it's really funny how, like, the organization, how they have, like, little adjusters, like, thinking of it like a car seat. They can adjust their chairs however they want to feel most comfortable to them, but they all still have their chairs, like, so high. But no one wants to put their chair higher than Xemnas, because none of them want to get turned into a dusk. In the real Twilight Town, didn't Roxas cross past with Hainer and the others and make acquaintances with them? I suppose. You can think whatever you want about that. What triggered Roxas' separation from the organization? Because he kept having reoccurring dreams of Sora, someone he didn't know. He felt he needed to leave the organization to find out who these people he didn't know were. Because Axel didn't want him to go, he didn't tell Sora about Roxas and Castle Oblivion, did he? In Riku's ending in Chain of Memories, could you tell us the meaning of the scene where the king and Riku are walking together and Riku Riku suddenly plops down. That's because Riku realized he couldn't completely get rid of the darkness inside him. The king mentioned it in Kingdom Hearts 2, that because Riku held Xehanort's Heartless in his heart, he disappeared from the king's sight. It's a sort of foreshadowing. In this scene, the king's face looks worried for a moment because he felt that Riku might eventually no longer be there. 
Riku headed towards Diz in order to restore Sora's memories to normal, but in the end, his departure from the king was so he wouldn't show his preparations to use the darkness. I'm too invest, I'm going to keep reading. Could you tell us at what point Riku covered his eyes? When he departed from the king. You don't know after the scene, but in Riku's ending in Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, when he comes to wherever Diz is, he's already covered his eyes. It's crazy how much character development Riku ends up having in Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. It was like the start of Riku's like quote redemption arc and the climax when Ansem completely took him over in days. And going through that entire journey with him to his resolve and dream drop distance was pretty spectacular and it's a big reason that a lot of people have Riku as their favorite character still to this day. Man, I replayed Riku Chain of Memories recently but I feel like like looking back at some uh, Chain of Memories cutscenes uh, reading this. Please confirm some things about Castle Oblivion. Kingdom Hearts 2 FM's additional event, The Truth About the Chamber of Sleep, you can gather from Zigbar and Zexion's conversation that Castle Oblivion existed in the realm in between before the birth of the organization. The organization then found it and used it for experiments about memories and to look for the Chamber of Awakening, right? Yes, since their conversation was about Marluxia's entry, they discovered the castle before that. In fact, its use, according to the other Anderson Report 7, was for only 13 organization members. Nominate awoke in Castle Oblivion, but because she and Roxas were born at the same time, half of the organization moved to the castle. In Kingdom Hearts 2 FM's additional event to put an end to everything, Sora says it should have been easy to say thanks to Nominate, but I couldn't say it. At this point in time, does Sora remember the things that happened with Naminé? If he remembers, it's because Naminé's existence was made possible by Sora, and when Naminé and Roxas returned to Kyrie and Sora, many things were connected. Since Sora never got to say thanks to Naminé, please think of that as a hint. I don't understand what he means by that, to be honest. In the additional event, Farewell to a Friend, there's a scene where Axel tells Roxas, you really do have a heart, don't you? What is the actual case here? In this scene, it ends bringing up more mysteries about Roxas. So, for the answer, maybe take care to follow your hunch as well. It's also related to Xehanort's memories, but I can't give any specifics now. Amora such a tease. You can tell that a lot of the Final Mix uh, events that they added did not get any elaborated context like added to them until uh, Kingdom Hearts, Birth by Sleep, Days, and etc. This interviewer was mad confused about everything that happened in those scenes. So do you know why have hearts now? Does Sora remember Naminé? Man, I need to see more Naminé in Kingdom Hearts. I'm glad we got our other Naminé cutscene in Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind, but I need to see like more of her because I love her character and she's a character that I've definitely been sleeping on for like years like i was not that crazy of a fan of nominee i always liked her but i was never like super invested in her character until i feel like my recent playthrough of chain of memories and a little bit of like seeing riku replica story like finishing kingdom hearts 3 like when i realized how important nominee was to riku replica it made me want to go back and kind of see you know why and then re-experiencing why like as a older person i was able to kind of understand the and themes and messages in the story and it made me really appreciate Naminé's character how loyal she is which just makes you like care for her like so much more we definitely need to see more of her and I hope we see a lot of her in Melody of Memories since you know Memories is kind of like her thing so no more don't don't like not put Naminé in Melody of Memories I need to see her but uh continuing on the last set of questions we'd like to inquire about the new secret movie Birth by Sleep and the new event the truth about the Chamber of Sleep Zigbar mentions a group that wields keyblades. Is he talking about the three armored people in the movie? Yes, Zigbar witnessed them when he was a disciple to Ansem the Wise. Straight up just confirms it, dang. The lingering sentiment is the same as the armored youth in the movie, but when he fights Sora, he mentions Aqua and Ven. Are those the names of the other two? Yes, the blue haired girl is Aqua. Dang, wouldn't have guessed. Was the armored youth name? His name appeared once in code in the 2006 Tokyo Game Show promotional video. Also, so Ven is actually a nickname. His real name is a little bit longer. Sora, Riku, and Kairi's names can be seen as sky, land, and sea. The three armored people's names take the shape of different properties of the world. Water, wind, earth. Ven looks an awful lot like Roxas. <laughs> I can't give any specifics about that. He may just resemble him. If there is a connection, 
Sora related too. What can I say right now is that these mysteries are all connected to the story. In the beginning, the armored youth's eyes are blue, but at the end they change to gold. Is this revealing a change in him? I can't give specifics about this either. I think everyone's imaginations are pretty capable, so please try and anticipate a lot of things. Oh man, dude, it's really funny reading this, because Birth by Sleep kind of connected a lot of things, a lot of mysteries that were in Kingdom Hearts 2 uh, Final Mix. And the Debatably, you could say Birth by Sleep was like the game that would like set like the foundation for the series in a lot of ways. Like Kingdom Hearts 1, Chain of Memories, and 2 yeah, definitely did their thing for like Sora and Riku and kind of Kairi, I don't know. Introduced characters like Roxas and a lot of characters in the organization. But Birth by Sleep is what kind of like started the, the hardcore like lore side of the fan base. It was always there, don't get me wrong. But I feel like a lot of like the speculation, the theories, people like me, I guess who got like addicted to the lore of Kingdom Hearts a lot of that was like from Birth by Sleep I love Kingdom Hearts 1's Chain of Memories 2 story and there was tons of things to speculate about from those games alone but Birth by Sleep just expanded the world so much and added like such a huge layer on top of like what we already knew and it was honestly like great some people don't like the change that happened you know with Birth by Sleep but personally for me it's kind of a big reason I'm in love with the series today. It just added so much and changed your entire perspective on the Kingdom Hearts universe world. I had so much world building to the series and I, I love like every second of it from like a story point of view. I honestly can't wait to cover the Birth by Sleep Ultimate. That's one of the main reasons I did this Ultimania series because I was like, all right, I want to cover the Birth by Sleep Ultimania. I even contemplated covering that like first but i was like you know what i might as well go in order of the series and you guys also like wanted me to go in order of like the series this series is just such a treat like through and through uh it's it's so good it's so good can't get enough of kingdom hearts with every new entry into the series i fall deeper and deeper in love with the series and i wonder like how far it's gonna go but uh that's gonna be about it guys that is the last question for the kingdom hearts 2 ultimania we are done with the Kingdom Hearts 2 Ultimania. I don't know when I'm going to start the day's Ultimania because there's a lot of stuff going on over the next couple of months, but, 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 I will say I will try, try to start it at some point in August. If not August though, I, I can guarantee you that I will at least have it like done or I'll at least have it like beginning by September, by early September. But I'm going to try to aim for starting it in August. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching today's video though. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, share the video with a friend or a family member. And last but not least, if you have not already and want to become a part of the union, all you have to do is hit that red little subscribe button down below. My name is Prodigy and I... We'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out.